Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the Dell Dimension 5150. Last time we took a look at how capable this PC is as a retro gaming PC. I then got to thinking, how usable is this PC for everyday tasks in 2023? In theory, this PC would run Windows 10, but it's just too resource hungry for a machine that is close to two decades old. Not to mention that Windows 10 will be out of support in just a couple of years time. Linux, on the other hand, will do the job if you choose the right distro. I decided to go with the latest version of Linux Mint, version 21.1, .1, and opted for the lightweight XFCE version. In my opinion, this is one of the best distros for people new to Linux, as it has that Windows familiarity to it. Of course, this isn't a review of Linux Mint, but a test for how usable it is on the Dell Dimension 5150. Just a reminder of the specs of this PC, it has a Pentium D820 clocked at 2.8GHz, 4GB of RAM, and a 1GB GT440. We'll start with internet browsing. Already we can see it's not the fastest at loading web pages in Firefox, but I would say this is adequate. Same goes for watching videos on the likes of YouTube and Twitch. Videos are slow to load, and you're pretty much limited to 480p if you want a smooth experience. If you're new to Linux, you need to bear in mind not all the applications you may be used to running on Windows will not likely run on Linux. However, there are plenty of free open source apps to choose from. Included with Linux Mint, there is LibreOffice, which will pretty much do everything you're already familiar with in Microsoft Office. There is an app store as well, which lets you browse hundreds of apps in several categories, including gaming, which brings us on to the next topic. Now, Linux isn't quite there yet with gaming, but it's continuously getting better, especially with Steam. The Steam app can be installed as easily as the Windows version, and the interface is identical, with the exception of your library now having a Linux compatibility filter for games that will work natively with Linux. Some games that aren't natively compatible with Linux can still be run with Proton, but I won't cover that as there will be plenty of videos out there explaining how to use it. Outside of Steam, there is a launcher called Lutris, which enables you to install and access games from several sources all in one place. This is great if you have games in Epic Game Store, GOG and the like, as well as being able to install games from physical media and emulate console games. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail around Lutris, as it's still something I'm learning about myself. From my experience, it's not perfect. I often encountered errors trying to install Windows games, and you may need to do some tweaking in the settings to get the game running somewhat properly, if at all. What you need to consider is a game might run very well in Windows, but absolutely terrible at the same graphical settings in Wine, the compatibility layer for running Windows applications in Linux, so results can vary. On the plus side, GOG has a growing library of games that have Linux versions, and they can be installed and ran without issue, mostly, and console emulation works great too. The App Store previously mentioned also has a vast library of games that are free to play, many of them based on renowned titles. Open Arena, for example, is an open source version of Quake 3 Arena and runs flawlessly on this PC. So to conclude, would I recommend running Linux on one of these old machines? I would say it all comes down to how you use it. As long as you're going with low expectations, this PC can still be useful in 2023. Light internet browsing can be carried out securely, and office applications can be run on pretty much anything. As for gaming, this is where things get tricky. Steam is great for running games on Linux, but other digital stores like GOG and Epic just aren't there yet. If you're a retro enthusiast like I am, you'd be better off just installing Windows XP or 7 on a PC like this if you're only going to use it solely for gaming. But then there is the option to dual boot it, so you can easily boot into Windows or Linux where required. For me, this has been a fun project, as I love Linux, but at the same time, it comes with its frustrations. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, let me know in the comments your experiences with using Linux to revive old hardware, and I will see you in the next video.